What? Oh, long lens. <laughs> what we have right here is the long awaited, highly anticipated Sigma 7200 f2.8. And the main question on a lot of people's minds, including my own, is has it been worth the wait? And by the end of today's video, you'll know exactly that and a whole bunch more about this lens. So make sure you stick around to the end of today's video if you want the full insight on this lens and also see how it compares to the king that of the Sony 7200 f 2 Mark II. So without any further flim flam or dilly dallying, let's get straight to the point and first start by looking at the build quality of this lens. No real surprises here, the Sigma 7200 is built like a tank and there are two good reasons for that. The first one is it's a Sigma lens and in my opinion Sigma always nail build quality with any of their lenses. And the second point is, well, it's a 7200, which I always find are one of the most durable lenses you can have. 7200s are designed to be able to withstand a bit of a beating. Ah! I didn't scream. <laughs> In the hand, the first thing that stood out to me with this lens was the placement of the zoom ring. It's at the very front of the lens, which differs from the Sony, which is more in the middle. In my opinion, and this is just based on my personal preference, I do much prefer the placement of the zoom rocker on the Sony over the Sigma. In addition, the Sigma zoom rocker does have a little bit more resistance to it. So when I found myself zooming in and out with this lens, it has caused me to be a little more shaky compared to when I'm using the Sony, but that's not really a big deal. However, there are two things that I can see being a big deal for some people, and that is the lens hood and the tripod foot. Starting with the tripod foot, well, we'll actually first have a look at a little design element that I do like with this lens, and that's to do with the rotating mechanism. So what this does every 90 degrees is it provides a little satisfying click. Have a listen. And what that's telling me is I'm perfectly aligned. So if I'm switching from landscape to portrait with this set up on a tripod, all I need to do is listen for that satisfying little click and I know I'm perfectly aligned. A much better system than what we find on the Sony 7200 where all we have as a reference point are these two little black dots which I find really annoying to try and like align because I'm just staring at these two black dots making sure that they are meeting perfectly however unfortunately sigma have not done such a good job in my opinion when it comes to actually removing the tripod foot so looking at the sony 7200 here removing the tripod foot is really straightforward all you need to do is loosen this clip press a button underneath push forward and there you go it's off really simply you could probably do it with your eyes closed actually you can let me prove it loosen push forward and it's off so simple unfortunately Sigma didn't incorporate such a simple system. In order to remove the tripod foot of this lens, first you have to undo these four screws. I'm a little bit baffled on why Sigma decided to design the tripod foot in this way. I mean, it's a light pain in the arm. And if you decide to remove the tripod foot, you actually run the risk of losing those screws, which I would do immediately. And then you'd be screwed forever. You'd actually have a screw loose, which I have a few of. So that's one part of the design I'm not particularly keen on with this lens. The second, as I mentioned earlier, is with the lens hood, which works by using a screwing system, which is pretty slow and clunky and at times frustrating to use. It also has a design oversight, and that is when you put it on upside down for storage, it blocks the zoom ring. I prefer the lens hood design on the Sony. It's really easy to take on and off. And also when you actually do have it on the lens, if it's upside down, it doesn't actually block the zoom ring. And it also has this little goated feature that I don't think many people talk about. And that's with this like flap right here or door. We'll call it a door. That's a much better word for it. And what this allows you to do is make adjustments to filters on the front on the fly really easily with no hassle. Whilst with a Sigma here, if you want to make any adjustments to the filter on the front with the lens hood on, I only have two solutions. The first one is removing the lens hood, then putting it back on. And the second one is almost like craning your hand into the lens hood itself and then trying to make any micro adjustments there to the filter. The lens hood design is more of a nitpick than anything else because many lenses don't feature a lens hood with a trap door in it but with the Sigma stepping into the territory of the Sony it would have been cool to see them incorporate a similar kind of design. With all that cleared up let's talk about this lens's overall weight. 
Coming in at 1,345 grams, it's lighter than the Mark 1, so it's 200 from Sony, but still a little bit heavier than the Mark 2. This shouldn't be a deal breaker, but what should be a deal maker is the price. The Sony is a whopping jaw dropping at 2,500 British pound, and the Sigma is only £1,500. That is a great deal for a 70-200mm lens at a constant f2.8 aperture whilst being jam-packed with features and amazing image quality, which actually brings along quite nicely to the image quality itself, which can only be described as phenomenal. And instead of me just chatting about it, I want you guys to be able to see some real-world examples that I've been able to capture with this lens over the last few weeks. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick my feet up we're going to put on some soothing music and we're going to fade to black. So what are your thoughts on the image quality from this lens? Here are some of my takeaways. The first one is autofocus, which is terrific. It's spot on for photography, no complaints whatsoever. The image quality in terms of the sharpness is off the chain. I'd actually say that this lens is as sharp as many prime lenses. Chromatic aberration is something that I couldn't notice at all, and I've taken and edited hundreds of photographs from this lens. I guess there is a little bit of vignetting when wide open at f2.8, but the lens correction through Lightroom can fix that up quicker than you can say in a jiffy. Now, before we dive into comparing the image quality between the Sigma and the Sony, I want to talk briefly about the video performance from the Sigma lens right here and I'm also playing a YouTube game. I'm sorry, I'm trying to retain your attention for longer. You've just got to play these games sometimes. Don't at me, don't hurt me. Thank you. <laughs> this is another area where I have really enjoyed using this lens. As you can see from these videos, the footage comes out beautifully sharp and detailed. You can even get some great looking bokeh balls. I also love the look this lens provides, especially at the 200mm end. Backgrounds are brought closer in and makes them look more prominent, plus backgrounds just melt away like butter when you use that f2.8 aperture. The OSS is also very impressive when you combo it with that 5 axis of in-body stabilisation. If you're steady enough shooting handheld, you can achieve some really stable footage even at the 200mm end. In terms of the autofocus for video, like with photography, it is fast, accurate and of course reliable. When I ran some tracking tests, the Sigma lens had no problems at all and was really able to maintain and lock focus. The same can be said when I did my oh so typical ducking in and out of frame test, the Sigma had no problems locking onto the background and then myself. So for autofocus and overall video performance, I'm giving this lens a 10 out of 10. You can't go wrong with it if you're planning on shooting some video with it. Now on to the big question that has been presented to me multiple times, and that is how does the Sigma 7200 compare to the Sony 7200 Mark II edition? So I have shot some comparison tests with these lenses out in the real world, and if I'm brutally honest, if I didn't tell you which photo were taken with which lens, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. Even I had a hard time spotting the difference between these two lenses and I took the photos, which I guess speaks very highly of the image quality coming from the Sigma. My findings are that the image quality between these two lenses is pretty much identical, which is mighty impressive for the Sigma considering it's £1,000 cheaper than the Sony, so a big win right there for Sigma. So overall, I've really enjoyed my time using this Sigma lens out on the streets, shooting cars, it's been able to handle everything I've thrown at it like a champ, and based on that, it makes it a really easy lens to recommend if you're currently on the market for a 70-200mm lens. And there we go, we finally got a 70-200 from Sigma. Was it worth the wait? I think so, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, if you wanna check out the photo shoot I did with this lens in the malls with the Lamborghini, and check out this top video right here, or if you fancy seeing a street POV with it, then check out this bottom video right here. But with all that said, until next time, create, explore, and inspire.